last time before now that you lost three of your last four games was the end of the 2017-2018 season. So, does it have little impact on confidence when you've been so consistent since then? Or, or does it mean a bigger job for you to lift the place because it's almost like a shot to the system when you have that kind of run form? It's a mix of all of that. So, of course, um, winning gives you confidence, losing costs you confidence. That's completely normal. You start thinking about different things. But we, it's how, it's how you said it, it's one by the goal, but uh, one. Uh, one defeat feels like two defeats. It's not a massive difference. So it's um, it's just to how you um, get back on track immediately on the result track if you want. And um, you can do that only not by hoping that things are now clicking even better than the game before. So you have just to work really hard. You have to fight back on track. That's always like this. It's supposed to never be different. And that's what we have to do um, all together on Saturday. But tomorrow. Not even 24 hours. Um, we have to do that as a unit with our supporters together, and yeah, just not waiting for the perfect moment. Just work for a very, very good moment, another good moment, a better moment, a perfect moment, a super moment, whatever. I'm exactly working for that, being perfectly protected. Because the way um, opponents play against us is not new. It's not new. They do it. Um, I don't know how long. It's like. Um, always, but um, it's like they have a, a defensive block and go counter attacks and um, do set pieces, stuff like this. Bomb, especially dangerous around set pieces, always good. I think they scored around about 50% of the goals on set pieces, so which is quite an impressive number. So we have to be small numbers and spot on there. We have to, to play football, we have to, to, to play the way through, to force the way through, to, to accelerate, to switch the side. Um, use small spaces to create big spaces, and we have to be perfectly protected because of the counter-attacking threat um, with King, Wilson, and Fraser, especially. So that's that's a job to do, and it would have wouldn't have been different if we would have won the last few games. Um, so that's the same, but just you, yeah, we want to fight, and that's what we have to. Show. I thrust about this because it's obviously impacting on the Premier League now. And with the fair play handshake having gone, Liverpool obviously won't have many spots on the pitch now, either for the foreseeable future because of the current virus outbreak. Uh, the possibility of playing games behind closed doors has been talked about as well. What are you being told? What information are you getting day to day as regards this? Yeah, I mean, and what advice, what protocol are you actually following? So what I, what I know is that my answer will not change to what I said after Chelsea game. It's just um, the, what I, of course, we get information every day. That's, as a person, uh, for, for all, we, we all see the news and stuff like this, but um, apart from that, but, uh, depending on the Premier League, for our games in the Premier League, we, we um, trust the, the things they tell us. So that's what we do. No handshakes or no handshakes. No mascots or no mascots. Um, if there are some help from our club, some additional things um, to do, these people sit together the whole week and, and think about what they can do to decrease the probability to get infected. And so that's that's it and that's what we try and nothing changes here really. Um, apart from yeah, why should you give a handshake in times so when um, it obviously is not um, the right thing to do, so it's not that difficult to change that. And apart from that um, we have to to do the normal the normal stuff. But how is that um, after Chelsea game people with more knowledge, people who think much more about it, who, who want to find solutions for all of us. If they make decisions, then we trust and hope, hope and trust that, that, that they are the right decisions that we follow them. We can set the top flight record of 22 home wins in a row. How proud does that make you and how much has Anfield, when you first arrived as a manager, is it bigger and more crazy than you expect in terms of the fan support? Yeah, it's much bigger, but that's why I realised that already um, a while ago. Yeah, and with management, in fact, with management, uh, Anfield is much bigger than I thought. Um, but look, that's the, that's the situation. We never, we never really thought about statistics and stuff like that. But um, in this moment, it doesn't feel like we won the last 22, and, um, and that's how our defeats change the things. That's how it is. It's, we cannot, we, we would never, have never ignored the things that happened to us, um, result-wise, injury-wise, whatever. We just have to. Um, 
we have to create an atmosphere tomorrow again, we have to use the atmosphere then, um, but for that everybody needs to have the right mindset, our, our people as well, because it's a, uh, it's a situation not only we lost, as a team lost, the three of the last four, our supporters lost them as well, and it's about the reaction, so really fighting back with an atmosphere which will be really exceptional. We face an opponent with Bournemouth who is fighting with all they have for the league now for months already. Had a really tough period, a lot of injuries. These boys are pretty, not all of them back, but a lot of them are back, and um, especially the front line is now back what they, what they usually for sure saw before the season, uh, which will be a front three, um, even when they played a different system before. But now um, that's they are in a, in a tough moment, and we respect that. But um, and we wish Bournemouth, by the way, and they are all the best, but not in the game tomorrow. So that's how it is. And um, yeah, that's about, it's not about records, it's about really winning the next, making the probability as big as possible to win the next football match. And that's tomorrow, and um, that's what we prepared for, and that's what we want to show. And I know you always look at one game at a time. You have a big week domestically and in Europe next week. Would getting a win tomorrow give you that momentum? How important is that? Look, you can't hope for a momentum, you have to work for a momentum, and that's what we, what we want to understand. You know. So we, in the moment, we are completely focused on, on nothing else than the game tomorrow. And um, so after that, we have three days, so it's the, the comfortable uh, space between two games, uh, with Sunday, Monday and Tuesday, for preparing the, the Atletico game. Yeah, and we will try everything that game, but um, yeah. Is there momentum? Momentum, you never have it for long. It's, it's, it's there for a moment and then you have to work again for it and again for it. It just feels in some moments, it feels easier, but it's never easy. It's always difficult and that's, yeah, would be great. I want to win that game tomorrow anyway, so it would be great if we could use it. Um, and let's hope and work for a little bit. Yes, anything? Um, Jürgen, when you talk about the right mi mindset, um, with, with the crowd out there, the fans, we spoke after West Ham and maybe it was a bit of nervousness, maybe a little bit. <laughs> is it because of the expectation and maybe the, the, the will for success and the gap that you have at the top and it's just like thinking, this will happen, this will happen, but it's just creating that atmosphere itself. Do you think that's been missing a little bit? No. Absolutely nothing to do with atmosphere. Not even lost. But there you go, I know this one for the atmosphere there, was a special atmosphere, I didn't like it too much, but um, we have to, time to respond for that the next Wednesday. Uh, Just the atmosphere at Anfield, I mean particularly... Yeah, atmosphere at Anfield, I don't think I start with the, 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 the dialogue about the atmosphere, from the issue you asked me about it. Yeah, I didn't ask you, you just yeah, felt no, a little bit flat. That doesn't mean they must make it right yeah. in the end. Okay. <laughs> so it's completely down, we are two one down, which crowd in the world is then 100% sure that you will um, turn it around? We were two one down, that's the truth, so that's what you have to do. It's not about the crowd, and so far our support, I would be the first to tell them, but so far they are only responsible for the good things that happen and not, and not a little bit for the not so good things which happen. Um, it's just, um, I think everybody knows what we need. So um, we need to play passes. We need to we need to try things. If you try things, they don't work out. That's all. Uh, and not all the time. It's not like this. It never was. You win a game four 0 It's not that each, each pass leads to a goal scoring opportunity. So and that's what that's what I mean with mindset. We have to be as a team. We have to be ready to try things which will not work out. That's that's how football works. You can't only play around the formation. You have to try to play through. You have to try to work. Try to play over. You have to take a risky pass. That's how it is. That's how football is. And um, if you don't try that, then you, you decrease your own chances to, to win the game. So, and for that, it would be nice if the, if the crowd would be ready as well. That's all what I'm talking about. Not difficult. Just the, the atmosphere will be as good as possible, I'm sure. I just mention it because I don't want that anybody will forget it. Yeah, again, because this is relatively uncharted waters for Liverpool. This Liverpool team over the last two seasons said to, to lose three games out of four. Since the Chelsea game, have you sort of tried to do things maybe a bit differently in training or freshen things up or have you had a big meeting with the players to sort of try and re-energise them? No, we had a big meeting after the Watford game and after the Chelsea game. It would have been really silly from my side if I had changed seven times and then I tell the boys you should have changed the situation. I, I said it after the game, I liked a lot of parts of the game. 
uh, we conceded two goals, um, one after counter attack, one after a super shot. I don't know what he wants to hear it, but a tricky ball. That's how it is. And um, I say Adrian usually saves that, but if you don't lose the ball beforehand. So there are two situations which are not like to have been apart from that. It was a very intense game against a very good Chelsea side uh, from a team where we changed on seven positions. So I was completely fine with that. It's difficult to, to mention that for a match after a football game when you lost it because nobody wants to hear that. But that's the truth. Um, we had our situations, two big, big moments um, where we scored. We did, and where we could have scored, we didn't score in that game, which we won at Chelsea months ago. We scored in these moments. That's sometimes the only difference. So after Watford, that was a moment when I thought, now we have to, now we have to talk uh, in a slightly different and maybe more detailed um, way. That's what we did. But then I will ask about the reaction showing in the Chelsea game. I saw a reaction, but from players, they have nothing, not all of them had to really something to do with the game before. It's just carry on. It's just carry on. We cannot speak. I cannot make a meeting where um, the same meeting uh, all three days that doesn't work and so no Chelsea it was Chelsea we are out of A Cup we were out of the A Cup last year I forgot where we where we left the competition last year we didn't want to have that but it is so we lost that game as well last year uh, before that probably we didn't lose a Champions League game I'm not sure um, and the the Premier League game we lost last year was some January or something yeah. So that's that's how it is. It's not new. Yes, and that's how it is. The opponents, what for strong, we not so much. Um, Atletico in the way game and Atletico. How can I say we have to win there? Clearly, in the way they, they approach the game, it's really difficult. A lot of teams will struggle with that. And now just um, that's it. We don't underestimate it. Really, it's not that we think oh, that's not normal. It's actually for us the opposite of normal. But to find the way back. You cannot change things just like you want. You have to rely on the things which were good before and were maybe good in the games you lost. Um, just do it with a higher intensity, do it with on a higher concentration level, force it more in some moments, um, and all that stuff. So there are a lot of things you can do without changing it completely, and that's what we try. Is it a concern as well the lack of goals? in the three games that you've lost, but, but, but maybe more importantly, not creating chances again against Watford either and, and in the game over in Madrid. And I know how good Madrid are defensively, but generally not creating as many chances as you normally do in matches. No, for me it's always difficult to create, um, to not create headlines because they're all waiting for me saying something and then if I can use all the word you use, then it's the headline. And I'm not that much in that mood, but I'm not lying. I see that we didn't score, and I see that we didn't play in these moments. That's what we are working on, 100 percent. We never took it for granted before, and we don't think it's now impossible to do it again. Um, it's just it's about how we how we set up, how we do the things, how clear we are in the moments, and how would we deal with the, the little setbacks in football games because they are always there. They are always there. They were always there. Um, and that's it. In, uh, the, in a lot of moments we could have done better, we know that 100%, and that's what we're working on. But we don't take it now like for granted, from now on we will not score anymore, and from now on um, they will score with each chance they have. That's not like it is, so we know we have to, we have to, if we perform on our highest level, and actually it's nothing else we want to do tomorrow, it will be difficult for all, and we should not forget that as well. Um, it's not that it will be an easy game for Bournemouth tomorrow. So, but we don't go in the game and think, yeah, Bournemouth, let's take the box and carry on and think about the technical. Not at all. We are 100% focused on this game. The boys want to want to get a result. The boys want to respond uh, in the right way, and that's what we have to show them because it's not important what we say. We think it's important that we show the pitch. And that's first time off since Chelsea. We have the opportunity tomorrow at 12 30. Uh, have you gathered from training um, in the last few days, Jürgen, that the, the lads are getting over it and moving towards uh, regaining the confidence that, uh, that, that you've had uh, in such um, spadefuls throughout the season? 
Because rain was good. Rain was good. We did good. I'm not sure how you think we could train after after the game. Uh, the games we played. So the boys who didn't play and who played in the game against Chelsea, they had yesterday secondary recovery. We cannot change that. That's that's sports science. So that is not a day for short reaction. Um, but the play, the boys who didn't play, they enjoyed the football a lot in the sessions we we, we, we had since then. And, um, but that was not really different before. It's I cannot, I cannot now. I get it again. That you ask it, but the answer is the only answer we can give is on the page. It's not here. It's not here you know, in the meeting. I cannot explain it good enough. I, um, we cannot speak about all the things um, we are talking about and all that stuff because um, I have to. Talk to my players, and it's, it's I, I would say people maybe say it's a difficult situation. I, I think it's rather interesting, to be honest. With you. I think it's really interesting. You know, it's, it's, that's my, my job, that's my, 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 my work I have to do to, to help the players to be now back uh, where we want to be and where we think we belong. And uh, that's, that's what we have to do in these sessions. And for that, we give them all help we can give them. Um, some recover, some trade, and um, then we bring them all together again today and make a lineup for tomorrow and play football in the best in the idle world, the best football we are able to. Carl, anything? Yeah. Is it, is it a coincidence that your worst results has come after the break? Is there anything in your, in your analysis which has suggested to you that things have changed from that point? Yeah. That's a Sorry. Did you ask if, if it's a what did you ask? I said, it's, it's, a, it's a coincidence. Yeah. It, yes, yes, yes. Not, yeah, so there's nothing in the analysis no. you've seen that suggests that no. anything is happening different. No. <laughs> Just a second, on, on, on that um, side of the thing, um, Alexander Stefan this week has been talking about the League Cup and how it should be abolished in England to make pictures a bit easier. What do your thoughts on <coughs> wow. <coughs> I, so I think we can do a lot of different stuff. Um, if, um, I, I don't want to, and everybody tells me in the moment in public, I, because I speak in public about it, uh, how much it means. So if you stand with your foot, I'm not <laughs> yeah. um, so obviously the, the, the League Cup is a very traditional um, conflict in England, so how can I say we should cancel it or scrap it or whatever, however you want to say it, um, then it's obviously from a financial point of view very important for the Football League, right? So for the teams there, understand that, how can we say it? Well, it's very important, of course it's important. So I really think we have to work on a solution. Um, and lesser games are already possible with just little adaptation. So that's how it is. And at the end, so far, what I'm happy about is that people now start really talking. So so far everybody even talks because everybody adjusts the standpoint. We need because of that, we need because of that, we need because of that, because of that. Okay, but we did already so much. We gave you a, a weekend for um, for playing Premier League instead of A Cup, stuff like this, so just you have to talk about it. And the, the season is intense. What I'm even more concerned about is what happens in the, in the, in the, between the last game of the season and the first game of the new season. Because that's a, that was always a natural moment where everybody had from time to time a break, and that doesn't happen anymore as well. So it's not the League Cup alone is a solution, but. Um, yeah, lesser games is still the target, I would say, because just you cannot um, carry on like this for long. That's that's one hundred percent sure. But it's not about me to make the decision. I think I said a lot about um, different things, but um, again, the decision has to be made by other, by other people. And I, I'm happy if they talk to each other. That would be the first time since I'm in England, and um, that's good, big progress.
David, anything from you? Just check through the room. Uh, anything from you, Richard? No? James, anything from you? Can, can you just check on Alison? What, what time, kind of time frame are you looking at? Have you got any chance of that to go? No, uh, so so the next week, not. Or the Moses Adami beyond that? Sorry? Or the Moses Adami's beyond that? Have you got any chance of him fit for that, do you think? Or? Look, I don't want to... Uh, Alison, do you want to come in for that? Yeah, I'm going to come in for that. Yeah, I'm going to come in for that. But she's not available for them next week. Not for tomorrow and not the next week. And then we have to judge the situation here. We would say after this national break, he's back 100%. But whatever we can get before that, we will see.